good morning all uh, we will start over from what we have left uh, in the last class so i think uh, we stopped here only like uh, method of obtaining optimum pattern using the chebyshev polynomial okay so we are using the idea the dolf chebyshev array okay the chebyshev polynomial we are using it for obtaining optimum pattern optimum pattern means what optimum radiation pattern that means the major log will be maximum and side logs will be as suppressed as possible okay we, we are going to suppress the side logs as far as possible and we are going to maximize the major log as far as possible okay so for that we are using the chebyshev polynomial and the cl dolf is the scientist who suggested that we can use the chebyshev polynomial for this purpose that's why it is called as dolf chebyshev array okay so uh, i think uh, the introduction i have uh, told you yesterday we are considering a linear broadside array okay two arrays we are considering arrays with even number of elements and arrays with odd number of elements so two arrays we are considering so we are taking the reference points as point zero okay so if there are even number of isotropic sources they can be arranged equally on both sides okay suppose there are 2k even means uh, it can be even any one number can be represented as 2k okay where k varies from 1 2 3 etc so here you can see uh, in the even number of isotropic sources are present there two k elements are there so in that k number of elements can be arranged towards the right side and k number of elements can be arranged towards the left side of the array or left side of the middle point of the array so the middle point of the array will be free there won't be any uh, element in the middle okay and from middle all elements are distributed equally on either side so uh, the separation between the elements is shown as d okay so a0 is the first element on both sides a1 is the second element on both sides likewise so each element is separated by a distance d so both a0s are separated by a distance d and uh, what will be the distance from the center from a0 from the center to a0 on both sides what will be the distance it will be d by 2 okay because a0 to a0 the distance is d in the middle the center line is there so from center line to a0 on both sides it will be d by 2 okay then for odd number of sources for odd number of sources how we can arrange that is the problem so if even number of sources are there we can arrange it equally on both sides there is uh, no issue in that but if even number of sources are there if even number of sources are there that means the first we will arrange in the center and we will just double the amplitude of that in order to compensate uh, since there is only single element okay so that single element we will place at the center and on both sides we will place the rest of the elements equally so one element will be at the center and all others we can place equally on both sides so there will be two a1 two a2s on both sides likewise but since there is only one a0 we will just double the amplitude of that source in order to compensate for the single source okay why we are arranging like this there is a question why we are arranging it equally on both sides any idea why we are arranging like that just to go through uh, the figure c the figure of chebyshev polynomial in the figure of chebyshev polynomial shows the yeah, for m is equal to 4 for even number of sources the figure is like this here only we are going to choose our major log okay and major log r the ratio r we are going to choose here only okay tm of x is equal to tm of x naught that will be here it is uh, m is equal to 4 that is fourth chebyshev polynomial only we are taking so 
how we will choose uh, the major lobe we will choose the major lobe outside one because outside one it is increasing exponentially an exponential increase is there so we can choose uh, our major lobe uh, somewhere here that is shown as x naught okay that uh, polynomial value of that particular x naught will be r small r okay so we have to choose our uh, major lobe outside one so uh, suppose i have chosen it here it is shown as x naught here at this point this is uh, the point x naught x naught and r r is the corresponding value of the polynomial so from there towards one side it will be like this but it is not a complete radiation pattern you know to obtain a complete radiation pattern it should follow the same path on the other side also okay so what we are doing if we are arranging the elements on both sides equally we will get a radiation pattern a complete radiation pattern that is it will start from here it will go up to this maximum uh, value of major law then it will come back in the same manner so that we will be getting a complete radiation pattern okay that's why we are arranging equally on both sides okay it is not like that we are uh, choosing uh, something randomly based on our instinct it is not like that okay so i'll just uh, show you uh, one pictorial representation of uh, that one uh, how uh, the log like this uh, radiation pattern is coming okay and uh, just listen so i think uh, i can uh, you're able to see this can you see yes so here you can see m m is 1 2 3 4 okay for four values of m uh, the radiation pattern is being plotted so you can see that the maxima or the ma major lobe is going up to here and uh, if if we are increasing the value of m what is happening it is getting more and more convergent okay more and more narrower or in other sense the directivity is increased and along with the major lobes or the minor lobes are getting suppressed so the radiation pattern will be it will go like this it will go like this then it will reach the uh, maximum point then again it will go in the similar manner okay so we will get a complete radiation pattern so in order to obtain this only we are arranging uh, the elements say, uh, like in the same manner on both sides of the center middle point of the earth okay that's the idea behind that we'll come back to our uh, main topic so that was the idea okay so uh, so i have told about the arrangement and all now uh, we know that uh, if we are having uh, an array with uh, odd number of elements how to arrange that and if you are having an array with even number of uh, elements how to arrange that? okay that problem is over now what we are uh, going to find out or well, if we are having an array we are going to find out field strength at a distant point p that is only shown here p that p uh, the point of reference we will take as the middle point the middle point of array is uh, taken as the reference point and phase differences we will calculate accordingly uh, you might be remembering this uh, calculations uh, we have done it for uh, an array of n isotropic elements an array of four isotropic elements like that uh, we have done that for four elements mm, uh, space the lambda by two part we have done uh, the same derivation in the same manner we will calculate the total field strength at a distant point t the total field at a larger distance in the direction theta is a sum of field of symmetrical pairs of sources and is given by for even number of sources even number of sources in a, uh, the field strength we are going to calculate okay for even number of sources e t e e t means the total field e t 
the total field that suffix e corresponds to even number of sources okay so e t e, e total field due to even number of sources how can we calculate that you see even number of sources first source on the right side you see that is point b b b is at a distance at what distance from uh, this or theta equal to zero or reference point b is at a distance d by 2 from the reference point okay so we are taking the reference point as the middle point only so from middle point this distance will be d by 2 okay so what phase difference that will uh, constitute what phase phase difference so psi by 2 phase difference you may, you may be remembering the same calculations we have done for an array of four elements so we can say that when psi, psi is equal to beta d cos theta. Okay, you may be remembering that. Otherwise, you can just go through that. Anyway, there is no need to take uh, that again uh, in this class. So uh, we already gone through that. You can directly write it as psi by 2. Okay. So uh, psi is equal to beta d cos theta. Since uh, here uh, we are uh, dealing with d by 2, we can say that the point B, the ray coming from or uh, the radiation from point B is having a phase difference of cos psi by 2. Okay. Similarly, uh, since the number of sources are even from point A, from point capital A also uh, one ray is coming. That will be also having the same path difference since point a and b both are situated at d by 2 distance from the center okay so collectively we can write it as 1 a naught cos psi by 2 corresponds to point a okay corresponds to point capital a. and 1 a naught cos psi by 2 corresponds to point b capital b okay so collectively by adding those two we can write as 2 a naught cos psi by 2. Okay. 2 a naught cos psi by 2. You can see. 1 uh, a naught cos psi by 2 corresponds to this B. And another a naught cos psi by 2 corresponds to this point. So, collectively both we can uh, write it as 2 a naught cos psi by 2. Similarly, for all sources. 2 a naught uh, are there, then 2 a 1 are there, 2 a 2 are there. Likewise, it will continue. Okay, since the number of sources are even. Similarly, we can write 2 a 1 cos 3 psi by 2 for a 1. Why 3 psi by 2 there? You can see from the picture, a naught is at a distance d by 2 from the center. And a 1 is at a distance d by 2 plus d, that is 3 d by 2 from the center. Okay. So, uh, A1 will be having a phase difference 3 psi by 2. Likewise, 2 A1s are there. So, 2 A1 cos 3 psi by 2 plus 2 A2 cos 5 psi by 2. Likewise, it will go. Okay. And uh, we can general expression, we can write it as 2 A A okay. cos N E. N E is the number of elements since uh, number of elements are even uh, the uh, suffix e is used so n e minus 1 into psi by 2 that will be the general expression you can just check if we are putting uh, any even number of sources as 2 what you what you are going to get 2 minus 1 that is 1 psi by 2 so if two number of sources are there only a zero will be there one is around the left side and one is around the right side so a zero cos psi by two that only you are going to get okay so <coughs> the any the range of values of any uh, they are shown there any is equal to two four six up to two into k plus one okay you should uh, specifically notice the difference that is not two k plus one it is two into k plus one where k varies from zero one two three etc why uh, they are uh, incorporated as 2 into k plus 1. Instead, they should have told that just 2k. 
since the number of sources are even, just two k they should have told. But here uh, they are deliberately told it as two into k plus one. That is because the k you see the range of uh, values of k k varies from zero, one, two, three, etc. Here you can see that we have represented the general equation as two a k. The first element we are representing as a zero. Okay, so uh, if we are putting k is equal to zero, the number of sources should be two. That will be satisfied by this only. Okay, if we are just expressing it, it as two k, and we are going to put uh, k is equal to zero, we will get the number of sources as zero. Okay, that is not logically correct. In order to avoid that, uh, we are doing like this. Okay, we are. Uh, making the general expression as 2 into k plus 1, where k varies from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And the first source we can obviously take it as k naught. And that will be giving FS difference psi by 2. There is no problem in that. Okay. And uh, so, what will be n e minus 1? n e minus 1. n e equal to 2 into k plus 1. So, n e minus 1 will be. 2 into k plus 1, what is 2 into k plus 1? 2k plus 2. That is equal to any. And any minus 1? 2k plus 2 minus 1. That is 2k plus 1. 2k plus 1. Okay. This is different. This is 2k plus 1. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> any minus 1 divided by 2 will be equal to 2k plus divided by 2. So, the general expression we are going to write. Uh, total field ET due to even number of sources is equal to this 2, we can take it as common. 2 into summation over that summation limit. Let it be there. We will uh, see that. The general expression AK cos NE, <coughs> NE minus 1. We are just replacing that with NE minus 1 is 2K plus 1. Okay. NE minus 1, that is. 2k plus 1 divided by 2. Sorry. Any minus 1 by 2 into psi. Okay. That any minus 1, we are replacing it 2k plus 1 and by 2 is there into psi. And the limit, how we are going to put? That is the next question. Limit is k equal to 0 to k equal to capital N minus 1. What is capital N? That is n e divided by 2. Okay. What is n e? n e is the total number of array elements. That number is even number. That we know. Suppose uh, n e equal to 4. How many elements will be there? 4 elements will be there. And uh, what will be those elements? 4 elements means, you see here, 2 a0 on both sides and 2 a1 on both sides. 2a zeros and 2a1. That will be the four elements. What does this, what does that mean? If there are four elements, we need to find out only two coefficients. Since the elements are same on both sides. Okay. We, there is no need to find a0, a1, a2, a3. This is not at all required. If there are four elements. Four elements means one a0 will be on right side, one a0 will be on left side. 1 a1 will be on right side, 1 a1 will be on right side. So basically, we need to calculate a0 and a1 only. Okay. So that's why if there are four elements, we need to calculate only two coefficients. That's why the range is written like this. Okay. N e by 2. That is capital N. Our range varies from k is equal to 0 and k is equal to capital N minus 1. Why capital N minus 1 we are putting here? Because if total number of elements is 4, okay, we need to find out a0 and a1, not a1 and a2. Because the first element we have uh, denoted as a0. Okay, so 0 also we are counting here. First uh, amplitude of the first element will be a0. Okay. So, in order to adjust that only, here we have written as k is equal to 0 to k is equal to capital N minus 1, where capital N will be equal to 
n e by 2 or half of the number of the elements okay we can uh, put any random number suppose n e is equal to 2 just uh, substitute n e is equal to 2 n e is equal to 2 means what the total number of array elements is 2 2 number of elements are there okay if 2 number of elements are there means what will be those elements 2 a0s 1 a0 will be on right side 1 a0 will be on left side just check whether this equation holds good for that or, or not just check n e is equal to 2 n e is equal to 2 means n e divided by 2 is 2 by 2 that is 1 okay so uh, capital n is 1 so what what should we do our summation our summation will be k is equal to 0 to k is equal to n minus 1 capital n is 2 by 2 that is 1 so uh, capital n minus 1 will be 0 so 0 to 0 only one time will be there 2 a k is equal to 0 cos 0 2 2 into 0 psi by 2 okay so a 0 cos psi by 2 that is only we are getting 2 a 0 cos psi by 2 that means 1 a 0 on the right side and 1 a 0 on the left side okay that is the equation okay so I think uh, you have understood this. Okay, understanding these basics are uh, of much importance. Okay, you cannot uh, let it go like that if you want to study. So a similar approach uh, we are uh, taking for our odd number of sources also. For odd number of sources also, we are taking a similar approach. Okay, meanwhile, I will take your attendance. Okay, today only 99 people are there. Okay, anyway, so okay, we will uh, move on to our topic. So we have finished for even number of sources. We have finished. Now we will move on to odd number of sources. So, uh, so for odd number of isotropic sources, how it should be? For odd number of sources, you can see that the first element, A0, it is located in the center itself. So there, there is not going to be any path difference for that. Because our reference point is center itself and the first element is located in the center. So there is no phase difference will be uh, counted for a0 because A0 is located in the center itself. Okay. And uh, A1, A1 are located on both sides, A2 are located on both sides. And how far they are located? They are located D distance. D is the separation between the elements. So A0 and A1 are separated by distance D. A1 and A2 are separated by distance D. Like that. Okay. So individual elements will be separated by distance D. And A0 is located at the center itself so there no phase difference will be there for a0 so the total field expression for total field we can write it as et total field o eto o means all number of sources eto is equal to to a0 first term we can write it as such since there is no phase difference or no path difference for that since it is located in the set the center itself next 2a1 that is 1a1 on the right side and 1a1 on the left side 2a1 cos what why here we are, written, we are writing it as psi there we are written it as psi by 2 and here we are writing it as psi okay can you answer anybody <coughs> We are written it as psi by 2 in the even number of sources case. And here, while we are consider, dealing with odd number of sources, we are writing it as psi. Any other place?
Yeah, they are really listening or they are, they are just left? Okay, what is the distance? What was the distance of A naught? Yes, yes, yes. Anjana. Yeah, correct answer. At least I got one answer. I'm happy. So uh, it's like you see, uh, you see the odd number of uh, sources case here. This A one is at a distance d from A naught. And A0 is located at the center. Okay. So basically, A1 is at a distance D from center. Here, in center, the one was there. First uh, element was A0. And it was at a distance D by 2. Okay. So there, we have considered psi by 2. And here, we have to consider psi. Since uh, these sources A1 are at a distance D from the center. Okay. That is the idea. So, to A0, first element, there is no phase difference. Plus, second elements, to A1 cos psi. Third elements, to A2 cos 2 psi. Likewise, it will continue. Okay. It will continue up to what? Up to which level it will continue? N0 or NO minus 1 by NO is the total number of odd elements. Okay. NO minus 1 by 2. Why that is NO minus 1 by 2? Take just an example you take. NO means you have to select any odd number. Take it as 3. Okay. 3 means uh, how many elements will be there? 3 elements will be there. And first element by default it will be on the center. Okay. So 1 already minus from that. Then 2 elements will be on both sides. Okay, that's why it is written as n o minus 1 by 2. That minus 1 is adjusted for the element we are placing at the middle. Okay, so uh, n o, uh, the range of n o is shown there. n o is equal to 1, 3, 5, etc. up to 2k plus 1. It is, it is not 2 into k plus 1, it is 2k plus 1. And k varies from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. And uh, n not sorry n o minus one by two is equal to k, or just two k plus one is equal to n o. The same only they are uh, just uh, taken k on the RHS. That is only okay. That is n o equal to two k plus one. That is that equation only they are written as n o minus one by two is equal to k. Okay, so. Uh, the general expression can be written as E T O. The total field due to all number of elements equal to 2 we can take outside. K is equal to 0 to K is equal to capital N. Okay, here you can see the difference. There goes N minus 1. A K cos K S I. Where N O minus 1 by 2 is taken as capital N. Why here it is taken as capital N? It is highly logical only. Okay, NO minus 1 by 2 means what? Suppose there are 3 elements, odd number of elements, you have to take, uh, take it as 3. NO equal to 3. There are 3 elements. 3 elements means how many coefficients we need to calculate? A0 will be, uh, 2 A0 will be there at the center. Then 1 A1 on the right side and 1 A2 on, A1 on the left side. 3 elements completed. That means we need to calculate A0 and a1 only okay so n o equal to 3 you put in the equation 3 minus 1 by 2 that is 2 by 2 2 by 2 is 1 that means capital n should vary up to 1 only okay in practical case also we have found it correct that's why it is given as capital n is given as n naught minus 1 by 2. Okay. But in the previous case, it was n e by 2. Since that was even number of elements. Okay. The same thing 
if we are uh, the same logic logic is same only we are just applying the, here it was even num even number of elements and here it is odd number of elements the logic is same only just uh, the difference is uh, there the number was even and here the number is odd okay and uh, here cos k psi okay there it was psi by 2 since the sub separation was d by 2 okay initial separation was d by 2 and here we are using Psi, since the initial separation is D here. Okay, all other logic are same only. Okay, so this is the general equation for total electric field at a distant point P due to these sources. If the number of sources are even, we are having uh, the, this expression. If the number of sources are odd, we are having this expression. So we have found out the total field at a distant point. Okay. Now what we want to do? That is the next question. The Chebyshev polynomial Tm of x is equal to cos m delta can be expressed as a polynomial of degree m. Okay, Chebyshev polynomial you have already seen that that is cos m delta or cos m cos inverse x. Delta is cos inverse x. Okay. That we already seen that. And here they are saying if this cos m delta can be expressed as a polynomial of degree m. That is the problem. How that can be expressed? Okay, that is very simple only. You just take what is cos 2 theta, expansion of cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta, expansion of cos 2 theta is 2 cos square theta minus 1. Okay, cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1. Then cos 3 theta for cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. So basically, we can say that if we are expanding cos 2 theta, we are going to get a time cos square theta or the degree will be 2. And if we are expanding cos 3 theta, we are going to get a term in cos cube theta or the degree will be 3. So generally, we can say that if we are having a term cos m theta, that can be expressed as a polynomial of degree m. That is only we are saying here. Okay. If we are having an expression with cos m theta, this cos m theta can be represented as a polynomial of degree m. Okay. Chebyshev polynomial can be expressed as a polynomial of degree m. Okay. Thus, if the array polynomials are equated to Chebyshev polynomials of the same degree, then the amplitude distribution is given by coefficients of the Chebyshev distribution. So here, the this is this E T O and E T E. Okay, they are called as array polynomials. Okay, that means array polynomial is nothing but the total field at a distant point P. ETO and ETE are called array polynomials. So, if the array is there, we can calculate the array polynomials. And the array polynomial should be equated to a Chebyshev polynomial of same degree. And then their equated means their coefficient should be compared. Their uh, second degree time will be there and it will be having a coefficient. That coefficient should be equated with the same coefficient of Chebyshev polynomial. The array polynomial will be, will be having different times. Okay. And the Chebyshev polynomial will also be having different times. And we are choosing, once we obtained the array polynomial, the array polynomial we can obtain if the number of elements are specified. Okay. If the number of elements are specified, suppose if number of elements is 3 or number of elements is 4, we can calculate from these equations E, T, O and E, T, E, we can calculate the array polynomial. And we will be getting a degree for that array polynomial. Okay. And once we calculate the array polynomial, we can do or we can equate the array polynomial with the same degree Chebyshev polynomial. Suppose the degree of array polynomial is 3. We take Chebyshev polynomial of degree 3 and equate the coefficients. And the amplitude distribution is given by coefficients of the Chebyshev distribution. And if you are taking the coefficients of the Chebyshev distribution as amplitudes of the elements, 
of the array, our dot stream show array is completed. Okay. So for that, we are uh, just uh, approaching that. This is the basic idea, and we are uh, approaching it as step by step. Okay. So first step is calculating R. Okay. So R, we have already seen that R will be the main log maximum, uh, the ratio of main log maximum to side log level. Okay. We are just choosing R. So it, it will be in uh, DB, side log level, below main log maximum. Okay. Side log level below the main log maximum in DB, that is uh, 20 log R. That will be given in the question. Okay, side log level below the main log maximum in decibel only they will be uh, giving that. So uh, that will be uh, the uh, decibel of R. 20 log R will be that quantity. From that we can uh, calculate R. Okay. So once we have calculated R, what is the next thing to do? Once you have calculated R, the next thing to do, what is the ne what is the next thing to do? Select the Chebyshev polynomial of the same degree as the array polynomial. That is, t n minus one of x naught is equal to t m of x naught equal to r. Okay, basically we have to see what r is. Okay. That is, R is already shown in the basic image. See, here you can see R. Okay, here you can see R. That is, Tm of x naught, x naught comma R, it is written here. Okay, that is, if we are putting, here it is shown as uh, Chebyshev degree, degree of the Chebyshev polynomial is 4. So, this point is T4 of x naught this r r corresponds to t4 of x naught okay likewise here we have to find out r that is our basic requirements what should be the ratio of uh, main log compared to side log that is only idea okay we can, we can compress the side log levels for a given main log level that is the basic idea we cannot completely we cannot completely neglect the side logs side logs can can only be compressed so that ratio we are taking or that will be our design requirements and uh, from that uh, that ratio r we are finding out so that r will be equal to some tm of x naught some tm of x naught that m we have to find out okay then that is equal to t n minus 1 of x naught equal to m of x naught t m of x naught that is only uh, uh, explained in point number 2 what is n small n small n is the total number of elements total number of array elements okay so we have to select if the number of array elements is n we have to take the polynomial Chebyshev polynomial of degree m that m should be equal to n minus 1. That is simply say, if there are four number of elements is given, okay, the number of elements is our design requirement only. And uh, this ratio r is also our design requirement. That is prefixed. r is given and uh, number of elements is also given. Then which polynomial we should select? That is only the question. Suppose if the number of elements is 4, we should select g3 of x the third Chebyshev polynomial we should select. Okay. If the number of element is 5, we should select D4 of X0 and equate it to R. Okay. Or else we can find out X0 in another method also. Our basic idea is to find out X0. Okay. X0 we can find out in another method also. 1 by 2 into by using this equation r plus root of r square minus 1 all times to 1 by m where m what is m m is n minus 1 n is the total number of elements total number of elements in the array okay so likewise by using either of these two methods we can find out what is x naught okay so these things uh, will be more clearer uh, once we are doing a practical problem okay 
that we will do in the next class. For the time being, you have to remember how to choose the Chebyshev polynomial. Okay, you are given. R is given. Okay. The main log maximum by side log level that is given. The ratio is given. That R should be equated to some Chebyshev polynomial. How to select the Chebyshev polynomial? Just look at the number of elements in the array. If the number of elements in the array is n, just take the Chebyshev polynomial gm of x0, where m is, m is equal to n minus 1. Okay, and equate it to r. So, and solve for x0 and obtain x0. Or you can obtain x0 by using one more equation also. Okay, you can use either method. Then, next is choose array polynomial. We have to choose the array polynomial. Chebyshev polynomial, we have chosen. Okay, then now choose the array polynomial et. ET, E or ET, O based on number of elements is odd or number of elements is even. Okay, for that, we already have delta equal to cos inverse x. We were, uh, this we have studied in the very first slide of this uh, Dolph Chebyshev polynomial. Okay, Dolph Chebyshev polynomial, it is uh, expressed as cos inverse, cos of M cos inverse x. So, so we have just uh, uh, taken it as cos of m delta, where delta is cos inverse x from that only. So x is equal to cos delta. Okay, if delta is equal to cos inverse x, x is equal to cos delta. Which means x should be less than or equal to 1. Because a cosine function, maximum value is 1 only. Okay. But here x varies up to x0, which is greater than 1. That you can see from the graph. This x, x here it is varies up to x naught. This x is varying up to x naught. It is not uh, entirely uh, within the range zero to one. It is going beyond that also. So to avoid that condition, x naught is going above one. To avoid that condition, we are just normalizing x with x0. x0 is the maximum value of x. So we are max, uh, normalizing x with x0. We can restrict it within 1. So just uh, dividing x by x0 and uh, we are marking it as z. Okay. z is equal to x by x0 that we are taking as cos delta here. Okay. So <coughs> that is that will be equal to cos psi by u. Okay, cos delta is the path difference. So <coughs> here, path difference we are taking as psi by two. Okay, so z is equal to normalized value of x that is equal to x by x naught. X by x naught is our new cos delta here. Okay, our co original cos delta was x only, but since x is going above one, we are normalizing x with x naught, and we are taking our cos delta as a new cos delta. So cos, now cos delta is equal to z which is equal to x by x naught. And since delta is, is the path difference, here we are taking the path, path difference as psi by 2. So that will be equal to cos psi by 2. So for even number of sources, our general equation is there. E t e is equal to k is equal to 0 to k is, uh, k is equal to n minus 1 a k cos 2 k plus 1 into psi by 2. This is our general expression. Okay. And we are just expanding that. What we will get? A0 cos psi by 2, A1 cos 3 psi by 2, uh, A2 cos 5 psi by 2, etc. etc. And uh, here you can see that cos psi by 2 we have taken it as z. Okay. Cos psi by 2 it is equal to z. Cos psi by 2 equal to z from our assumption, from our normalization. So just uh, replacing cos psi by 2 with z. So a naught z plus a1 into cos 3 psi by 2. That can be represented as 4 or just to take uh, psi by 2 as theta. That means cos 3 psi by 2 is cos 3 theta. Okay, cos 3, 3 psi by 2 is cos 3 theta. Cos 3 theta equal to for cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. So from that, this cos psi by 2 is z. So it can be represented as 4z cube minus 3z. Likewise, 
we are expanding every time okay we are expanding each and every time this is the basic expression for even number of sources okay practically this only we have to do this is the array polynomial in terms of z where z is x by x naught which is equal to cos delta which is equal to cos psi by 2 okay then for odd number of sources for odd number of sources we have deliberately taken it as 2k psi by 2 okay you can see uh, from our uh, basic expression it was cos k psi okay for odd number of sources it was cos k psi but here we have deliberately taken it as cos 2k psi by 2 if 2, 2 and 2 will be get cancelled and it is cos k psi only. Why we are taking it as 2k cos psi by 2? Because we have to introduce or we have to calculate based on cos psi by 2 or delta path difference. Okay. We have to calculate based on cos psi by 2. So in order to incorporate that only, we are deliberately taking it as cos 2k psi by 2. And just expanding this. A0 plus A1 cos 2 psi by 2, a2 cos 4 psi by 2, etc, etc, etc. Okay. Here also, same manner, you can expand. 2 cos 2 theta is cos 2 cos square theta minus 1 and cos 4 theta is 8 uh, cos raised to 4 theta minus 8 cos square theta plus 1. In the same manner, you have to expand. Okay. So, this is the array polynomial of over number of sources in terms of z after normalization okay so just summarizing the things what we have done first we have to find out the array polynomial okay for even number of sources and over number of sources we are having different different polynomials okay so r is already given the ratio r is given and number of sources n is also given if n is given we have to select the Chebyshev polynomial of n minus 1th degree okay so you should equate that step shape polynomial to r t n minus 1 of x or t m of x x naught equal to r and find out x naught x naught you find out then normalize x with x naught x by x naught such that you can treat it as z z is equal to x by x naught which is equal to cos delta which is equal to cos psi by 2 that is our path difference okay then go back to the field polynomial e t o and e t e just rearrange it based on z okay just rearrange it based on z next step the equal Chebyshev polynomial with the array polynomial and calculate the coefficients so now we got one Chebyshev polynomial is already there and now we have found out the array polynomials also. Array polynomials based on z. z is x by x naught. Okay, array polynomial is there and Chebyshev polynomial is also there. Now equate both. Equate the similar terms and find out the coefficients. And take ratios for relative amplitude. That is nothing but suppose if you have taken, if you have calculated uh, the coefficients as uh, 2, 4, Eight like that, then just divide it. Two four eight means it is one two four. Just normalize that. That is only there. Normalize with farthest element amplitude. These are the steps. Okay. These are the steps we need to follow. Just uh, summarizing once again. First uh, R will be given. R is the ratio that will be given. Then uh, number of elements will also be given. Okay. Based on the number of elements, we can calculate the. We can find out the which Chebyshev polynomial we have to use. That Chebyshev polynomial we should find out. From that, we should find out x naught. Okay, there are two methods to find out x naught, either from Chebyshev polynomial or from by using one equation. Okay, if r is given, r is given order. Then, what is the next thing to do? Calculate the array polynomial based on number of sources. If even number of sources are there, one other array polynomial will be there. If all number of sources are there, another array polynomial will be there that you should calculate based on z or normalized value of x then equate both compare the coefficients and 
normalize the coefficients. That's all. That will be the result of the Dolph chip shape array. So uh, the advantages. It provides a minimum beam width for a specified side log level. Okay. Minimum beam width means this maximum directivity. Beam width we have to minimize as far as possible. It results in side logs that are all of the same amplitude and like uniform distribution in which side logs near adjacent to the main log is largest and other others progressively decreases. Okay. That is all side logs will be having amplitude, same amplitude. All side logs will be limited within one compared to R. R will be the amplitude of the major log. Compared to R, uh, the side logs, all side logs will be of the same amplitude. All side logs will be within one. Okay, that uh, you already I already shown you pictures, uh, images how they they will be like that. Okay, all side logs will be having amplitude, same amplitude, one only. Okay, but uh, in other uh, methods, what is what was the problem? The side logs near the major log will be large, okay, and side logs farther from the major log will be uh, small only. But here, all side logs are minimized. That is the advantage. Then the ratio of current between central element and end element is small, which provides ease in feeding this. Array. This was one major disadvantage uh, of our uh, binomial array. In the binomial array, the ratio of current between central element and end element was high, but here that is small, okay, which provides ease in feeding design. So we can uh, easily uh, design a feeding system for this. So, uh, this, these are the uh, basic uh, steps in uh, design of a Dolph chip shape array. So, uh, this is this, uh, somewhat uh, complicated and uh, the next class uh, we are going to do a practical problem based on this. For that, uh, a thorough understanding of uh, today's class is much important. Okay. I don't think uh, it will be easy for you to catch uh, these lessons uh, from the text or not. Okay, so basic steps you should remember. The basic steps are R, the ratio that is given, number of elements that is also given. From the number of elements, we have to calculate the Chebyshev polynomial. Okay, then we have to find out X0, just equating Tm of X0 is equal to R. We have to find out X0. Then normalize X by X0 is Z. Okay, so. Uh, you have to find out the array polynomial based on Z. What is the array polynomial based on Z for the given number of sources? Then just equate box and find out the coefficients. And finally, just normalize the coefficients. That is the basic procedure. Okay. So I think uh, today you can uh, stop here and uh, tomorrow we will be doing a practical problem based on this. Okay. Thank you.